Hello everybody and welcome to day one of Premiere Week. I am your yarn host Jennifer and today's tutorial is going to be this cute little water bottle holder. Now the idea behind this water bottle holder is I actually created a water bottle holder that is very similar to this while we were out on vacation because I really need to stay hydrated when I'm out on vacation. Specifically when I'm in Florida. I mean you have to pretty much carry liquid with you at all times. It's hot down there. And so I created a water bottle while we were on vacation and it did like everybody wanted it. Everyone was like you need to show us how to make that. It's so pretty. It's so cute. And so I decided to make it one of the Premier Week tutorials. And I give you an option to make the handle longer or shorter. So you can do the wrist strap like this or you can make this strap much longer and do cross body or over your neck. I suggest you do it cross body and not just around your neck because it's easier to carry. Otherwise it just pulls on your neck when you got a heavy water bottle. You can also make this bigger or smaller for bigger or smaller bottles of water. Um, I just give you the basic rundown and the stitches that we used for this. So this tutorial should work up within probably an hour or two hours at the longest if you're a slower crocheter. This yarn that we used is actually the hipster cotton. And the color I used is melon, melon berry. I dropped it. I yanked the bottle so hard it came right out of the case. All right, go back in. This is the color melon berry, which is pinks, purples, whites. Although that's not, I mean, it's, it's a purple white, okay? But they also have other, like, the, there's a color called Rainbow Roller Skates that is very rainbowy. It's very fun. I really like that one. I just don't have any more. And then this color is Desert, Desert Skies. This is a three-weight worsted. Not three-weight worsted. It's a three-weight. It's a lightweight three. This one is the color Hello Hydrangea, and it's blues and purples and green. <clears throat> this cotton is a three-weight. It is... It says it recommends a five millimeter hook, so it's on the thick side of a three weight. Machine wash warm, tumble dry, which we love, which is why it's fantastic to also make garments in this yarn, which we have in on the channel in the past. Um, hundred and it's 100% cotton. It's 229 yards, and this is 4.99 right now on Premier Yarns. Now, when it first came out, it was 7.99 at Michaels, which is where I bought all of these at. But $4.99 is a much more reasonable price on Premier Yarns. And for one, you can see, I can make probably two more of these. I definitely can make at least one more water bottle holder. So you can get two water bottle holders out of one skein of the Hipster Cotton. I really like the Hipster Cotton. Like I said, I have made wearables out of it in the past. We have a tutorial on the channel called the Spring Fling T-shirt, and we made it out of Hipster Cotton, and we mixed it with the Cotton Sprout DK version. And it's it's a nice yarn. It makes a really nice wearable. It's fun colors. It's meant to look tie-dyed, which I really, really like the look of the tie-dyed yarn. It's fun. It's just cute. It's unique. And the stitching, there's several different stitches in here. So we, you're going to learn, this is like a little stitch sampler water bottle holder. Okay, there's like half doubles, doubles, star stitch, bean stitch, um, half double crochet in the third loop. And then I don't remember what this stitch is called, but I show you how to do this stitch. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. And then the handle is, I, be, I, I think I did the handle using foundation double crochet but I'm not positive on that because it's been a while it's been five weeks since I recorded this tutorial but you're gonna learn lots of different stitches and this is like a little cute stitch sampler water bottle holder and it has really good function like when you're like traveling somewhere and you got your hands full you just hold this on your arm and you got your water or if you make the the longer version of the strap you can just wear it across body on your neck and you have your water with you and your hands are free which is fantastic which is the whole idea behind the water bottle holder so stay tuned and you will see the tutorial coming up right now for this water bottle holder um like i said one ball of hipster yarn is all you need one ball of a like cotton would work and um here's the tutorial all right, to get started with this water bottle tutorial, we are going to need a ball of hipster cotton, 
Um, this used to be a Michaels exclusive, which is why it has the limited time only thing on it. But you can find this on PremierYarns.com. Um, this is the color Hello Hydrangea, but I'm actually working. <laughs> I already started one. I'm going to show you the base in the Hello Hydrangea, but we're going to be switching over when I get past a certain point to the Melonberry colorway. Because this was my intention to make it this color to begin with, but I already started it before the tutorial started. And this is how the magic of um, tutorials happen here on the YouTube. Sometimes we'll have a swap out. <laughs> it's just how it goes. Alright, so... I am untangling the little bit of yarn barf I created. <clears throat> now to get started, I have a G hook, which I believe is a four millimeter hook. This yarn is a three weight, so you're gonna need a smaller hook. If you use a four weight cotton, you're gonna need to adjust these stitches a lot. So I just suggest we'll stick with the three weight. Because this one, I mean, you're gonna want you're also gonna want to have your favorite kind of water bottle on hand, which I forgot to bring the bottle in here. Um, but when I swap to the other colorway, I'll show you the water bottle and we'll we'll go we'll give you more information on that. I feel like you guys are kind of far away. Lower the camera a little bit. Um ow. So have your, whatever type of water you drink most frequently, we're going to adjust this kind of to that size bottle. So you can adjust this to make it bigger or smaller just by adding or subtracting rows. I, I try to make my tutorials as easy as possible to be adjusted for whether it's a wearable or something like this. Just honestly skip a row. It's not going to make a difference. And we are the queens over here of... Uh, fudge, I call it fudging it and it's just kind of like making it up as we go along so if you need to change something and like the stitch account doesn't quite add up it's not the end of the world <laughs> like just just throw something and like squeeze it in or something you know all right so we're gonna start with a magic ring now to make a magic ring it's kind of like making a slip knot you just put the you make like a awareness ribbon see how it looks like an awareness ribbon the short tail on the bottom Go from top to bottom, grab a loop, and pull it up, okay? And then just kind of hold it there. If you hate magic ring, you can just work this into a single crochet stitch, or a, a chain stitch. It's the same type of idea, so you can also just make a slip knot, however you make a slip knot, but instead of closing it off on your hook, just work back into that same loop. Or chain one. It, it none of it really makes a difference <laughs> so what I'm doing is the magic loop method that I showed you I'm going to chain one and that's not counting as a stitch at all and then I'm going to put 12 double crochet in here one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I haven't worked with one of these types of hooks in a long time. In case you don't know, this is a Furl's Odyssey. These have been discontinued. You may still be able to buy them, but they have been discontinued. Grab that short tail and just pull it tight. As tight as you can get it. Tight, tight. Alright, there you go. Now we're going to slip stitch to that very first, not the single crochet stitch, but to the first double crochet that we created. And the reason we have that little chain one there is it just closes off some of the gap that can occur when you're when you're working in the round like that. I, that's just personal preference. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. So I'm going to chain one, and in this first stitch, and I'm working over the top of my tail so I don't have to weave it in later, I'm going to put two double crochets. That single crochet, or that chain one did not count as anything. And in every, oops. In every stitch all the way around, we're going to put two double crochets. This is how we keep it going in the round. 
One of the things I like about the hipster cotton is you just don't know what color is going to pop up next. This is not a typical, uh, this yarn is like a tie-dye. So it's like somebody tie-dyed it and you don't know what color is going to appear next to what color. And that's the fun part about the hipster cotton. It's one of the reasons I really like the hipster cotton is that you'll get like these little tie-dye marks, right? And it happens frequently throughout the yarn. Or if it look kind of like splotchy, like the color is like all over the place. Now if you hate the way this looks because you're not a child of the 60s, you're not a love power kind of flower power, love, peace, love, not war, like <laughs> make love, not war. If you're not one of those people and you don't like tie-dye, okay? <laughs> We're just being silly. But if you don't like the look of this yarn, a really good substitute is the Cotton Sprout. The cotton Sprout is a DK cotton as well. It's a good substitute. So you go buy either or. I believe they're around the same price point. And they're about the same thickness. And you won't get like the watercolor effect so much. Because Cotton Sprout comes in, the DK version of Cotton Sprout comes in solid. And it comes in speckled, which this would be super cute and speckled as well. Alright, go into that last stitch and put two double crochets. And then we are going to slip stitch and we're gonna skip that first chain one slip stitch into the double crochet. And see it just cuts down on that gap that naturally appears there. And chain one. And then put two double crochet in this first stitch. Two double crochet. And in the next stitch, we're going to put one double crochet. And this will be the increase for this row. And then the next row, we put two double crochet. The next stitch, not the next row. I think I said the next row. The next stitch, we do one double crochet. So the pattern for this row is two double crochet, one double crochet, two double crochet, one double crochet, two double crochet, one double crochet. And this is the recipe for working in the round and making it flat. So two double crochet, one double crochet, two double crochet. one double crochet. Now if this yarn looks familiar to you and you've been around for a while, I made a t-shirt tutorial out of the hipster cotton. Love it. I mixed the hipster and the cotton sprout together and it is an adorable. Definitely check out that if you're in the market for a t-shirt. I mean it's not it's not a lightweight typical like oh it's a cotton t-shirt but it's a it, we're calling it a t-shirt. I believe that pattern is the spring fling tea. And that is one of my tutorials from a previous Premier Yarns week. That's what made me really like this yarn. And I still, I made two of the spring fling t-shirts in the cotton sprout and the hipster mixed together. And I still have both of them. I still really enjoy them. They are somewhere in my yarn make closet. And if you can hear Mr. Cinnamon coughing, he is sick. But since I filmed this last month, he's not sick anymore because now we're in March. And I filmed this. Actually, I filmed this is being filmed in January, so. <laughs> you don't have to wish him well. He's, he's probably all healed up by now the time this video airs. So two double crochet, one double crochet, two double crochet, one double crochet. One double crochet. And... I missed a stitch somewhere because this should be in a single or double crochet. So I'm going to end it in the false stitch because it don't matter. We are fudging it, people. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's a water bottle holder. Nobody's going to flip your water bottle over and look at the bottom and go, oh, you missed a stitch. They're not going to do it. And the weight of the water bottle is going to stretch your stitches out, so it's not going to matter. All right, so that was. One, two, that's three rows. We got one more row to do before we change it up. So we're gonna chain one again and in that same stitch put two double crochet. And then in the next two stitches, we're just gonna put eight, just one single double crochet in both of those stitches. So double crochet, double crochet, 
and then two double crochets. Okay. So we got two double crochets, and then in the next two stitches, we're just going to put a lonely double crochet in each one of those stitches. There's one. Next stitch. There's two. And then we're going to put two double crochets. Two double crochets. Followed by two single double crochets. They're not single double. Double, double, triple, triple. No, nope, I'm getting you guys all confused now. <laughs> Alright. So see how we have two double crochets, a double crochet, a double crochet, two double crochets, double crochet, double crochet, two double crochets, double crochet, double crochet. Double crochet. That's what we're doing all the way around. This is going to be the bottom part of the water bottle holder. This is going to be the coaster part, if you will. If you wanted, you could just make this into a coaster and then bam, you got a coaster. Stop after this row and call it a day. Dang, I made a coaster today. I accomplished something. <laughs> you ever have those days where it's like, oh, like, I just, I can't. And so if you made a coaster, you called it a success. I have those days. Today was almost one of those days, but I pulled myself up by my britches and made myself come do this tutorial. Now the next row is going to be double crochets as well, but we're not doing any increases. And we're going to change the double crochet slightly. So it's just going to be double crochets all the way around. But we're going to do it around the post. And it's going to give us this cute little ridge like this. Because these double crochets are going to go around the post of this row we're making right now. And I totally pulled some of those stitches out. I felt it. I felt it go... I've been working with the Omi hook so long, this furrow feels small to me. count again somewhere that's what happens when I talk and like I said don't matter none so, stitch count doesn't really matter a whole lot so it should go your last three stitches should be two double crochets double crochet double crochet but I had to put one in the false stitch again because apparently I'm missing a stitch skip the chain one go into the double crochet slip stitch all right now this is where Things are going to get a little funky, funky, funky. See how the color looks all, like, wonky? There's a little green stitch here. Like, why is there a green stitch? That does not make sense, right? Because it's watercolor. It's like, it's, um, tie-dye. All right, so we're going to chain one again when we, when we slip stitch that together, right? We are going to now, we're going to be working around the post. So we're going to be working around the post. Around. So instead of putting it here, we're going to be working like that. But we're going to be working around the back side of the post, okay? So we're going to wrap our yarn like we're making a double crochet, go around the back, push it through, go over the top of that post, grab the yarn, pull up a loop. You might have to flip it over for this first stitch. Because clearly, I messed up. Hang on. Redo, redo. Woo, rewind. Let's try that again. Yarn over, go in and over the top of the double crochet, pull up a loop. You should have three loops like you're making double crochet. Pull off two, pull off two. We made a double crochet around the post. We're going to do the next stitch is easier to see. So we're going to go up and over, grab it loop. And then double crochet. Going 
really, really slow. I'm going to talk slow. Once you get the hang of the stitch, it's really easy. Just go down through the front. Oh, no, I did, I did that wrong. I go from the back. <laughs> I went over the top. Go from underneath, go over the top, push that post back. Pull up a loop through the back side and double crochet. Okay, so that's creating this ridge to pull forward. This is going to be the wall, so it's going to sit up like this. And you're going to have that little lip on the bottom. Now, if you can't figure out how to do the stitch and the stitch is just irritating you, you can just do double crochets all the way around. You don't have to do around the post. But um, this gives it a really cute little detail on the bottom so you have that cute little lip. So we're just going to, in every stitch, just go around the post, pinch it so that you can see what you're doing, and double crochet. Next stitch. Yarn, wrap your yarn like you're making a double crochet. Go in from the back, over, push that stitch towards the back. See the stitches right here? The stitch is over your hook now. Grab the yarn, pull it through, double crochet. Alright, let's do the next one. Up, through, see, this is a double crochet stitch. Double crochet around the post. And this is creating the wall of the side of our water bottle. Okay. So it gives it like a really good definition between the bottom and the side. Okay. Swap over because you just continue doing that until you reach the end of the row. Which luckily for me I pulled out a couple stitches so I can show you how to end the row. This is what it should look like. Go around those last couple stitches. So that was our last stitch, so we're going to slip stitch to that very first stitch. And then we are going to make sure everything looks nice and tidy. So it should be starting to come up like this. And it'll come up more as we do the next stitches. So this next set of stitches, we are going to do... Wait, what are we going to do? We are going to do the star stitch, okay? So we are going to chain three one two three we're going to go in to that first stitch no not the first one the second stitch from the hook i'm going to pull up a loop go on the next stitch down pull up a loop go on the stitch below that pull up a loop you should have four and then in the next two stitches pull up a loop pull up a loop okay Yarn over one, two, three, four, five, six loops, pull through all of them, chain one to close off the stitch. We're gonna do this all the way around, okay? And I showed another tutorial on how to make this, and I kind of visualized the stitch as like a person. So, right here where we just chained is a little tiny hole, okay? If you pull too tight, the hole will disappear. That's the guy's belly. So we're going to go into his belly and pull up a loop. Okay. We're going to go, this is his front leg. We're going to go into his front leg and pull up a loop. We should have three. Down here at the bottom is his foot. We're going to pull up a loop there too. So we have four. And then in the next two stitches, we're going to pull up a loop. One, two. We should have six loops. Yarn over, pull through all six. Chain one. Okay, this is his head. His belly is right here. This is his leg. And at the bottom of his leg is his foot. Okay. So we have head. Belly pulls up a loop. 
Make sure your loops aren't trying to like snag on each other. Leg pulls up a loop. Where that stitch is coming out of is his foot. Pull up a loop. And in the next two double crochet, pull up a loop. Pull up a loop. Yarn over. Pull through. Chain one. Now we got again. Head. Let me, let me grab something else to show you. Head. Belly. Leg. Foot. And then the next two is his next two steps. He's... He's two steps ahead of us, right? So we should have six. One, that's two. Leg should be three. Foot, four. Next two stitches, those next two steps, that's five and six. Yarn over, pull through, chain one to give him a head again. Belly, leg, foot, and then two steps. Six chains, pull through six, chain one. Belly, front leg, foot, and he takes two steps forward. Six chains, pull through, chain one. This is what it will look like. This is just, the. there's two rows to this stitch. So the star stitch has this basic setup row and then the next row in the belly hole all the way around you're going to put two single crochets and that finishes off the star. All right, so belly, leg, foot, two steps, two steps. Belly. Leg, foot, and make sure you're pulling up, and then two steps. You want to make sure that these loops are loose enough that you can very easily pull through them. And keep this loosey-goosey, or otherwise this part of the stitches will be smaller than the rest of the bottle. And so it'll go up, and then it'll go in, and then it'll come back out, and then go up again. So if you're going to do the star step, oh, we forgot to chain one. Just make sure everything's loose. And I'm, I'm crocheting too tight because I'm trying to show you guys. And I'm not pulling up. See, I'm pulling up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I see how I'm pulling away this way when I pull through. That makes sure we have enough gap room, like. We need a little gap in there. Two steps. Chain one. Belly, leg, foot, two steps forward. I take two steps forward. We don't take two steps back because that would be terrible. That's like frogging. Cue the dog popping the door. Hi, baby. Can I close the door or are you going out? Guess it, Bubba Lou. And you don't know, that's my dog, Bentley. My ride or die dog. My road dog. My emotional support dog. My best friend. He's wagging his tail. He's like, yep, I'm all those things. Belly, leg, foot. Two steps. Belly, leg. Steps. Belly, leg, foot. Two steps. No, yep, we're almost there. We only got five, six, seven, twelve more <laughs> stitches to go. I don't even know. Now, you don't have to use this as a water bottle holder if you have a different beverage of choice. 
um, just make sure that this fits whatever that bottle or can looks like and you can carry your beverage around with you as you go like imagine you're going to the car and you got your keys in your hands and your purse and like all these other things but you don't want to have to stop somewhere and get something to drink but you know it's going to be a long day so you just slide your favorite drink like whatever it is you slide it in here you hoist it over your neck so that you have like an extra hand for all the crap you're carrying why are you carrying so much don't you have somebody help you carry stuff i don't it seems like i always got my hands full isn't that a mom's job though carry everybody else's crap I like using these water bottle holders for when I'm going out for the day or I know I'm going to be gone a long time. It's very important for me to stay hydrated because of some of my medical issues. And I, honestly, it's, it's important for a lot of you to stay hydrated and you're not drinking enough water and you know that. Alright, so we got to the last. We have four. I, I don't have two steps. I have a step. And then I have this bulk. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here and in this, sti this stitch somewhere, just add that extra stitch. Yarn over, pull through, slip stitch to end the stitch. And then I am going to slip stitch to join in that first stitch. And then there we have the completed star row. Isn't that pretty? Actually, this is not the complete. It's not completed yet. We haven't finished the star row because to finish it, we have to go in the belly hole, which is very evident. Like, it's right there. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there. Whenever you see all these stitches kind of joining together, like pointing towards, that's like, oh, here's the belly. So the stitches are telling you, we're all pointing right here at this little hole. So go right there and put two single crochet. One and two. Go to the next stitch. Put two. One for every star you should have two single crochets in the belly and just do that all the way around this is really this this is simple so single crochet in every belly stitch two single crochets and see how it finishes the star see? so yeah I like I like having this and I like the neck strap that goes over the shoulder too because um, being a bigger girl, like, and I have slumped shoulders, so my shoulders are very rounded. Things don't stay on my shoulders. Like, a purse strap will not stay on my shoulders. And so, I like the over the neck and over the shoulder one, the diagonal strap, if you will, because it's just easier for me to hang on to it, especially with the weight of the water bottle. So, you can, however, if you want to make, like, a hand strap and not, like, a full long strap, do that. It's your water bottle holder. You make a little tiny strap. Makes no never mind to me. I know we haven't even got to that point yet, but um, this is a really good way to stay hydrated on the go and to remind yourself when when I don't have a water bottle with me or I don't have one of my big water cups, I don't remember to drink water throughout the day. And I know a lot of us have the same problems. Like if it's not right there, I'm not going to remember to drink. And it's really important to be healthy to have, to make sure that you're hydrated. Especially with some of, I know there's a lot of others out there that have diabetes like me or have high blood pressure like me or have heart problems like me and we need water. Like our heart, our heart is happier when we have water. The diabetes is happier, more manageable when we have water. So that's why I wanted to do the water bottle with all of you guys because I want all of us to be healthy. I care about each and every one of you watching this video. And it's pretty. Like, look how pretty these colors are. Like, it's fun. As summer's come in, and even if you're just sitting there, even if you're just sitting there in your recliner, you should still be drinking some water every once in a while. And this acts as a built-in coaster. So you can put it on your water bottle, and it's pretty. It'll make your water pretty. It'll make you feel fancy drinking it. All right, we got back around to the very last star stitch. See, that row went fast. Two double crochets in that last star stitch slip stitch wherever you can find that it fits just it doesn't matter just where just slip stitches somewhere <laughs> it don't matter there and that pretty little star stitch not cute all right now this acts as the coaster you could also 
cut this right now and throw it in your cup holder in your car you have an instant cup holder like little cozy thing to keep all the gunk out of the bottom you know when your stuff drips in the bottom of your cup holders in your car same thing you just pop that in there and then you have a cute little cup holder thing all right now the next uh, let me check my pattern notes. Did I write it down? Yes. We're going to do four rows of the bean stitch. Now, the next four rows are just the bean stitch. Really easy. We're going to chain one. We're going to yarn over. We're going to go into the stitch. Pull up a loop. Yarn over again. Go in the same stitch. Pull up a loop. Yarn over again, pull up a stitch, pull through all, how many is in here? One, two, three, four, five, I got seven, I got seven loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through all of them, chain one. That's going to be our little bean. Now, we're going to skip the next stitch and go into the stitch after that and do the same thing. Yarn over, or wrap our yarn, go in, pull up a ute loop. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop. Make sure, you, again, make sure you have room in these stitches. Yarn over, pull up a loop again. You should have seven, and it doesn't matter if you do or don't, because you're just making a little bean. Nobody's going to count your bean. Pull through all of them. Chain one. Skip the next stitch. Go on the one after that. Wrap your yarn. Go in, pull up a loop. Wrap. Go in, pull up a loop. Wrap. Go and pull up a loop. Okay, yarn over, pull through all three, chain one. Skip the next stitch, go into the one after that, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop. You should have seven, pull through all seven, chain one. And see, it creates these cute little beans. Now, skip the next step stitch don't forget to wrap your yarn go into the one after that pull up a loop yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through all chain one do this all the way around skip the next stitch yarn over or wrap not yarn wrap your yarn skip the stitch go into the next one pull up a loop wrap Pull up a loop. Wrap. Pull up a loop. Pull through all. Chain one. See these cute little beans? The little beans. Skip the next stitch. Wrap. Go in. Pull up a loop. Wrap. Go in. Pull up a loop. Wrap. Go in. Pull up a loop. Pull through. Whoops. Pull through all of them. Chain one. You see how I'm pulling back when I'm doing those stitches? Skip the next one. So wrap. Going. Pull up a loop. See, I'm pulling back. Wrap. Pull up a loop. Wrap. Pull up a loop. Pull through all. Chain one. Skip the next one. Wrap. Pull up a loop. Wrap, pull up a loop. Wrap, pull up a loop. Skip this one. Oh, don't forget to chain one at the end. Don't forget to chain one. Oops. Chain one. Skip one. Bean stitch. Chain one, skip one. Skip one. Like I said, we're going to do four rows 
of the bean stitch. Sounds like Mr. Sutton has started dinner. So we're going to be hearing kitchen noises. Skip one. Don't forget to chain one at the end of that. Bean stitch. Bean stitch. The chain one is just to close the stitch. So you pull through all that. Now you got an empty, you got an open stitch still. So when you chain one, it closes the bean stitch. But because you chained one, that's why we're skipping one. So the bean stitch itself counts as a stitch, and then the chain one counts as a two stitch, which is why you skip one. Skip one, skip one, do bean stitches. Chain one. This yarn is so pretty. This reminds me of lilacs. And I know people all over the world say lilacs different. <laughs> There was an argument online one time they were talking about how it's lilac, lilac, lilacs. Like, all right, well. I don't know why people argue about such silly stuff. Why does it matter? But they do. People argue. My mom had a lilac bush in our front yard. And it was enormous. I mean, it was... It was so big, and the fragrance would come through the house. The whole house would smell good, and sometimes she'd go cut a couple of branches and bring it in. I don't know how many I did, but um, I just, I love the smell of lilacs. They don't grow very well where I live, because it's too hot, and it doesn't get cold enough in the winter or something. I don't even know, but um, my grandfather told her to trim it back. It's getting too big one year. And she trimmed it back, and it never flowered again for like five, six years. It was horrible. She was so sad. Alright, and we're in the last section stitch. We're going to put our last bean stitch. Don't forget your chain one at the end. Slip stitch somewhere on the side of that stitch. Doesn't really matter. And then, oops. We're gonna chain one, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work in between the stitches, just in this big old opening. That way we ain't gotta worry about nothing, okay? So, I'm gonna turn our work, we're gonna work backwards so that our beans kinda like, instead of the beans all laying one way, they're gonna lay like kinda like this. So we'll have beans going this way, and beans going this way, and then beans going this way. Otherwise, the beans will all be diagonal in the same direction. So I'm flipping and I'm working the other direction. So see how these kind of lean that way a little bit? The next row is going to lean that way a little bit. So chain one. We're going to put our bean stitch. So wrap our yarn. Go in that big giant hole. Pull up a loop. Wrap. Go in that big giant hole. Pull up a loop. Wrap. Go in the big giant hole. Pull up a loop. Pull through all. Chain one. Do that all the way around. Two. Three. And then just repeat this until you have four rows of bean stitches. So the next row, when you get to the end of the row, you're just going to turn and go back in the other direction. So when we get done with this row, flip it back this way and go back in the other direction. See how the beans, like they want to lean this way and then these ones lean that way? I mean, you don't have to flip it if you don't want to. If you want all your beans facing the same direction, it will still be cool. Um... It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but this is just a little design element. I like it better going back and forth. Alright, so since you already have this, this is figured out. I will meet you at the end of the fourth row of the bean stitches. So this is the second row of bean stitches. We're going to put two more rows after this. And just keep flipping, like work on the inside and then turn it around. Work on the outside until you have four. And I'll meet you at the end of the fourth row. Alright, so we are pro approaching the end of the fourth row of the bean stitch. And I'm working on the inside of the, the stitches. Slip stitch to join. 
chain one, flip our work back the correct way. All right, so see when we go back and forth, see how the beans go this way, this way, this way, this way. That's the way I wanted it to look. Otherwise, it would just, they would all kind of like stack in the same direction. Either way, um, so I did bring my empty water bottle in here. Let me show you guys what it's supposed to look like on the water bottle. Okay, so see, you have the cute little ridge right here. Cute little ridge. And then we're working up the bean stitches. And it should fit your water bottle so that you can slide it in and out very easily. It should not be tight. If it's tight, you may have to loosen up, grab a bigger hook if you need to. I hate to say frog it back, but like you want this to, to fit your bottle so it's not snug. These next two rows are pretty easy. This row is just half double crochet. So yarn over. Go in between one of the stitches and put half double crochet. Go into, actually put, just put two half double crochets in between each. That way we don't have to find no stitches. All right, so in between each bean stitch, we're gonna put two half double crochets. Cause remember each bean stitch is a stitch. And then the chain one to close it is another stitch. So each one of these bean stitches counts as two stitches. So in the center of those, just put two half double crochets all the way around and it will work out half double crochet real easy easy peasy lemon squeezy and this color turned out so pretty oh. see they had to call it hydrangea because they put this little cute little pop of pink in there but like really this is more lilac to me it's just it's so lilac-y and they do have pink lilacs We have white lilacs, all different shades of purple. Cue my son pounded down the stairs, which butts up next to my office. <laughs> I'm like, you're 10 years old. He, actually, he's only nine. Like, you're nine years old. You sound like a herd of elephants parading down the stairs. Two half doubles in each space, all the way around. And then the next uh, row, we're gonna do half doubles again, but we're gonna we're gonna do half doubles in the third loop. So this is gonna be like a stitch sampler water bottle holder. It's gonna look way fancier than what it is. Um, we're gonna do half double crochet in the third loop which will create a ridge kind of like this, but not as harsh. And um, just to divide off, the reason I like to do this is to divide, put a divider between the sets of stitches, the designs of stitches we're doing. And I will do this in hats. I will do this in, in anything I make, like washcloths. I will put a divider row of the hat. The I call it the ridge stitch. It's not actually called the ridge stitch, but it's um, half double crochet in the back, in the third loop called the third loop because it's not actually the back loop and uh, it creates a really pretty like ridge to like separate like hey look at those stitches and then look at these stitches <laughs> you know so two half doubles in each space all the way around we got to the top we'll slip stitch to join chain one now here is where I check my phone all right mail notification I don't care about that we're gonna do half double crochet in the third loop so when you have a half double crochet the top part this is this is the front loop this is the back loop back here and then when you flip it around there's the third loop down here and that's what we're going to be working in. So we're going to have to take our work and fold it forward so that we can see we're going to half double crochet in this back third loop back here. Okay. And when we do that,
what it does is it takes the top of the stitch here because we're usually working through this way that is usually hidden so it's like the top is usually hidden what we're doing is we're folding it so we're looking at the top of the stitch okay so see how it's folded right here you can see a cute little line that's all we're doing the most difficult part is getting my camera to focus so you guys can see where the third loop is so this is the top this is front loop back loop third loop is behind that and you'll still see like on the top of the stitches you'll see like a V that white is not wanting to focus so you'll see a V and then when you flip it down you see that there's another V there's a V there's another V so that bottom loop of that back V is what we're actually working into Oh, I'm splitting the yarn. Try it again. There we go. If you find that this yarn is being a little bit splitty, my best advice to you is to switch your hook out and try a different type of hook. Um, I will have that problem and I'll be like, oh, this, this yarn is horrible, it's splitting. And this splits a little bit and it splits a lot with the wrong hoop. The hoop, yeah. Hook. <laughs> so see, that's what it should look like. See how we're creating that little ridge right there? So just do that all the way around. The third loop only. And if you ever struggle with any of these stitches and you're like, I just cannot, it's frustrating, don't put the project away. Just do another row of half double crochets and be done with that. I don't ever want my projects to frustrate you. And I'm always open to your own interpretations. I don't get offended if you change the pattern up. Just don't like change one little tiny thing and then claim you designed it. Because that's, that's just not right. But by all means, make it your own. Adjust it. Adjust it. Isn't that pretty? I'm really, really liking the colors of this. This could be the prettiest water bottle holder ever. Just finish this till you get to the end of the row. And then I will show you the next set of stitches, which is also super, super easy. I think I'll worry about nothing. It's going to be so easy. And um, I'll meet you at the end of this row. If I can get into the stitch. Alright, so we're approaching the end of the row. We'll put our last stitch in. Slip stitch to join. And you're going to have a weird little, like, where you can see where the end of the row is here. Just because the colors change, but also because the stitches kind of, like, overlap a little bit. It's fine. So we'll just put that towards the back. Alright, the next set of stitches we're doing, super, super easy. You may have done this in a recent tutorial of mine. The stitch is kind of part of a blanket I did, and it's definitely part of a hat I created. The stitch is really easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain one. And in this very first stitch, we're going to put three stitches. So we're going to put a single crochet, a half double crochet, and a double crochet. So it's kind of a, a change to what we've been doing recently. We're just calling it a shell. It's half double, or single, half double, double. We're going to skip. The next two stitches and in the third we're going to put another one single half double double all in the same stitch oops not a half double there we go and it should look like that skip the next two stitches and in the third single half double double crochet Skip two and in the third, single, half double, double crochet. Skip two and in the third, single, half double, double. 
we're going to do this stitch for eight rows or if you need it to be longer you can absolutely make this section as many rows as you need to like if you this is just a basic 18 20 ounce bottle if you have taller bottles you can absolutely add rows to this skip two and in the third single half and double single half double and then double we're going to continue this row skip two single I have fiber in my nose. Oof. I felt the fluff go. Half double, double crochet. Skip two, single, half double, double crochet. Skip two, single, half double, double crochet. Skip two, single, half double, double crochet. You can hear a little man talking. He's having a conversation with his dad. Skip two, single, all I heard was YouTube, so I'm about YouTube. Half double, double crochet. Skip two, single, half double. Double crochet. Skip two, single, half double, double crochet. You guessed it. We're still doing single two. Or not single two. Skip two, single, half double, double crochet. Skip two, single, half double, double crochet, skip two, and if you don't have the right amount of stitches at this point, it is not going to matter, single, half double, double crochet, and now we're at the end of the row, and I only have one stitch to skip, but it does not matter, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into that first single of the row, I'm going to slip stitch to join and chain one. Okay, now we're just going to go in the single crochet here. We're going to go single, half double, double crochet. We're going to go over to here to that single crochet right there. And if you're having a hard time finding a single crochet, just put it somewhere in. If you need to go in between the two shells, you can do that. It's not going to make much difference. Put your single, half double, double crochet. You're going to do this. Keep going. This is round two. If you need to put stitch markers, because this is a little bit harder to tell where one row ends and one row begins. Uh, if you need to put a stitch marker at the beginning of each row, do that so that you can keep track of your um, your rows. We're going to do 8 rows of this. Unless you want it to be taller, then you can do 10 rows. If you want it to be shorter, I mean, it does not really matter. But just about 8 rows of this repeat of the, this, I don't know, increase shell. I don't know what this shell is called. Single, half double, double crochet shells. A step up. Step up shell. We're just going to make up names. And make sure you're putting it somewhere in between the two shells. It could be in this big hole here, or it could be in the first single crochet there. I had to do a real quick battery change. Um, my battery was flashing. I was like, no, we're dead. We're going to cut off right now. So in every space in between the shell, whether it be here or in that first single crochet, just keep putting the single, half double, and double crochet until you have about eight rounds of this. And then I will come back and I will show you what to do next. Like I said, this is a really easy bottle, water bottle thing, but it looks like you put a lot of effort into it because we're putting all these different stitches and techniques in here. And uh, it really looks fancy, especially with this real pretty yarn. Like this yarn is, look how pretty that is. It's so pretty. It's party, ma. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll meet you at the end of row eight of the whatever the step-up shell is.
Step Up Shell. Sim and Stitch is over here just making up names. We're just going to make up names. Because I'm not a Stitch Dictionary. I know how to do them, but I don't know what they're... And honestly, they don't really have official names. Like the book that publishes them says, Oh, this is the name of it. And then a whole bunch of people use that name of the stitch. And who says that's its name? I mean, its name might be Gerald. We don't know. <laughs> Alright, guys. I'm going to cut here. You can pause. Eight rows of this weird shell. And we'll be back. All right, we have definitely, definitely made it pretty far up this bottle. <laughs> now, everything's looking good. This is what it should look like. Like I said, if you want this to be longer, you can just continue this row until probably up to this part of your bottle. It's not really going to matter. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to do just several rows so we, this is my last stitch, so I'm going to slip stitch to join at the beginning of the row. And I'm just going to do half double crochets. You can do double crochets at this point if you want. I'm doing half double crochets because half double crochets to me usually are a little bit of a um, tighter stitch. And I want this to come in just a little bit. Like I don't want, I don't want to do any decreases. I just want it to be a little bit like inward. And so I'm going to try doing half double crochets. For this this row and see if that helps because I think it will bring it in a little bit and just put a half double crochet in every stitch so because you have three stitches for the shells just put a sing or a half double crochet you can probably do single two or double whatever you prefer at this point I'm doing half double crochets in the top of each one of those stitches on the shells Gonna half double crochet all the way around. That's what it should look like. I like half double crochet. I think half double crochet is wildly ignored in the crafting community. I think half double crochet is like the stitch that not a lot of people take advantage of because they're either doing single crochet for stuff like amigurumi or like, you know, stuff where they need really tight stitches. They're doing double crochet because double crochet works up way faster. And I think half double crochet is like... Uh, there, it's forgotten about a lot, and I I use half double crochet a lot. It's my favorite stitch. I don't know why it's my favorite stitch. I just feel like it looks good. There's a lot of things you can do with the half double crochet stitch. Like you do this whole cute little ridge thing. <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot to be said about the half double crochet. So we'll be sleeping on half double crochet. I really like the way the colors. I like the watercolored. See, it's it's watercolored, but it's also kind of tie-dyed effect of this yarn. I just like that. Like you just don't expect the next color to pop up when it does, and it's very like I don't know. I think it's beautiful. I love the way the colors look. There's not like harsh breaks, but again, like it's not a smooth transition either. Let's just like, okay, there's a spot here, there's a spot there. You see, if, I don't know if you can tell on this camera how many shades of purple there are. Because there's this lighter color, there's another more blue purple here. There's a more pink purple here. And there's this cute little corally color. And then this is like more of a pink than this purple. It's just pretty. Lots and lots of variations of one specific shade or lots of shades of one specific color I should say 
So at this point of the bottle making process, whatever your favorite brand of water is, or whatever your favorite water bottle is, we're going to measure it off of that. Now if you're a can kind of girl and you're drinking Dr. Pepper's in the can in here, I mean you could stop working right now and just put your strap on. Because <laughs> that's more than tall enough for a can. Probably a little too tall. All right, but we're going to... Put it on, and now remember, because of the weight of the water bottle is actually going to weigh this down. This is going to stretch up. It's going to stretch, and it's going to get a little bit longer. So give it a little tug, like pull on it, because it's going to stretch. See, I think that's looking nice and fancy. All right, I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do two more row, two more rows of half double crochet, and we're going to call it a day with the base of this. I, I missed, I missed, missed a loop. Um, I'm going to do two more rows of half double crochet. If you want this to be slightly smaller in the top, you can go ahead and put a couple of decreases like randomly throughout here. And I might actually do that, like put a decrease on the four corners. So here, 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 and here. And just do a half, um, two half double crochets together. So like this. You yarn over like you're making a half double. You go in, you pull up a loop, and then go into the next stitch and pull up a loop. And that's two half double, or two, yeah, two half double crochets together. And if you do that just randomly a couple of times around, it will just bring it in a little bit more, which is what I think I want. So I think I'm going to do that for this row and maybe the next row, just to bring it in a little bit so it's not so open. And um, it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. And it does not have to be measured out perfectly. We're just doing a slight decrease. And I will meet you at the end of the... Because the, we did one row here. This is the second row. I'm going to do one more after this. The end of the third row of the half double crochets. And... Um, let's see, I put another decrease in there. And then we will get started on the handle. Or the strap. All right, we had to move the camera up higher so we can get the whole bottle in frame because this is what we got going on. And this is so pretty. Okay, now what we're going to get started on, because I feel like that is a good length for a bottle holder. That way you still take and do your little chug. And like I said, when this water bottle is full, it's actually going to weigh this down a little bit more. So it's going to get, there's, this is all going to stretch out, which is fine. So what we're going to do is work on the handle. What I am going to do is make a small hand strap and uh, you guys can make this handle as long as you want. Like I said in earlier in the video, you can make this the best way that I like to make these is to go across my oh, like cross body. So you can make this as long or as short as you want. You can have it just long enough to slip over your wrist so you can carry it on your wrist. You can make it short enough that it goes over your shoulder like a purse. You can make it really long so that it dangles cross body. Or you can make it long enough so that you can hang it around your neck when you're walking. I can't hang it around my neck because like I already have a lot of weight on the front of my body. So like this just makes my neck hurt. <laughs> so I prefer wearing it cross body. But to do this we are going to create a foundation single or not nope foundation double crochet row and to do that we're going to chain one we're going to yarn over and we're going to skip two chains or two let me pull you guys back closer because i need you to be able to see what we're doing all right we're going to yarn over we're going to skip two chains over or two stitches over and in the third we're going to pull up a loop but before we make the double crochet we're going to chain one oops and split the yarn a little bit we're going to chain one and then we are going to finish the double crochet okay now we're going to yarn over we're going to go into the base of this stitch right here we're going to pull up a loop we're going to chain one and then finish the double crochet. And what this is going to do is actually build the row this way of double crochets. So we don't have to chain and then come back and do double crochets. And it, it makes it a little more sturdy of a stitch. So yarn over, go into the base of this stitch, pull up a loop, chain one, 
and then finish the double crochet. Yarn over, pull off two, yarn over, pull off two. Wrap our yarn, go into the base of the stitch. Actually, I didn't get the stitch right. Pull up a loop, chain one, that counts as the chain row, and then do the double crochet. Yarn over, go on the base of that stitch, pull up a loop, chain one, double crochet, and we're just going to keep doing this until the strap is as long as you want it to be. Don't forget chain one and then finish the double crochet. Yarn over, go into the base of the stitch, pull up a loop, chain one, and make the double crochet. And you can do this for a small hand strap. You can do it the size of a neck strap. You can do it cross body strap, under your arm strap, like a purse strap. However long you want to do this. And if you want this strap to be even thicker after you do all this, when you attach it to the other side, you can come back through and just do another row of double crochets on this side and make this thicker if you wanted. I'm not going to do that because I, I like this thickness. So whatever length you want this to be. The prototype for this, the one I made for myself, that was the inspiration for this tutorial, um, I made crossbody, and I love it. And I probably made this, I totally messed up, hang on. I probably made this strap probably three and a half, four feet long before I connected it. Like I said, this one, we're just doing a little hand strap something to dangle from my wrist or for me to like you know just use like a handheld strap you can make it whatever length you want just keep doing the foundation double crochet I keep wanting to say foundation single but it's foundation double don't forget your chain before you complete the double crochet I'm just going to keep going until it measures long enough to where the bottle fits in there and it fits over my hand as a strap. Well, that on my desk. I don't know where that came from. It's too cold outside for bugs. came in on that water bottle. That water bottle traveled with us from Florida. <laughs> Silly water bottle. It's the only water bottle I had still left in the recycling. Like, well, let's just remove the label. Alright. Let's test this out with the water bottle. It's not going to be long enough. You got to keep on, keep it on. I'm going to pause here so I can move my arms closer to my body because it's the end of the day and my arms are getting tired being on the table like this. And I will show you how we connect this. So just keep, keep doing the foundation, sing, double, cro foundation double crochet until it, I am so obsessed with these colors. <laughs> until you reach the length you want your strap to be. Now, as you can tell, this is not a stitch that I do very often, so my muscle memory is like confused. And I do this stitch way slower than I do all the other stitches because it's just not something that I'm used to. And if you're struggling with it and it's taking a really long time, it, that's normal. It's normal when you're learning this stitch, if you don't already know it, for this stitch to be really tedious and slow. This stitch always slows me down. It's frustrating because it slows me down, but at the same time, like, I love the way the found, I hate chaining. My chain always gets twisted, and, like, it always is really tight to work into my chain, 
And this solves the problem because everything stays loosey goosey. Everything looks nice. All right. I'm going to pause right here. I'm going to put another inch or two on here and we'll be right back. All right. So, grab my tape measure because this looks about right to me. For a hand strap, we got about 14 and a half inches. For a neck strap, I'm going to say significantly longer than that. Um, this is what it looks like. It's very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half where this strap is attached and directly across from that is where we're going to attach the strap. Make sure this is not twisted because it will drive you crazy. Alright. And what we're going to do is going to yarn over and go through there just like we're making another stitch. And then we're going to attach it over on this side. We're going to pull through the, the um, off frame. Let's try that again. All right. Yarn over. Go in like we're making a stitch. We're going to connect it opposite, exactly straight opposite of that. The first side of the strap, okay? And then we're going to grab the yarn and we're going to pull not through just the basic of the base of this. We're also going to pull through where that first stitch is, okay? And then we're going to finish. We're going to yarn over and pull through two, and then we're going to attach the top part of the stitch over two stitches. Oh, skip two and go over to the third and pull through, and then pull through all two of those stitches. And see, now it's attached. All right. And then that's it. Now, if you want to make this a little bit of a thicker strap, the way that you would do that is you would go to the next stitch over and make a single crochet okay then turn and put double crochets in your strap all the way across or half doubles or singles or whatever you want however thick you want this to be just double crochet the backwards and then when you get to the other side slip stitch to join and actually you know what I think I'm gonna make this strap a little bit thicker right it'll add a little structural integrity it will add a little bit more comfort on my wrist since this is going to be a wrist strap, let's just double crochet our way across. That shouldn't take no time at all. So now we got like a double thick strap. It'd be beautiful. Beautiful. So if you have made this beautiful water bottle holder, I would love to see photos of the color of yarn you chose. Which hipster did you choose? Or did you use Cotton Sprout? Like, either will work. Um, let me see pictures. Let me see the difference in the handles that you chose. Like, how long is your handle? How did you choose to wear your handle? Are you wearing your handle as a wrist strap? Are you doing it crossbody? Are you doing it around your neck? I want to see that. Tell me if you made any changes to the stitches. I want to know that too. And to show me the pictures, you can post it in the Facebook group. You can... Post it on Instagram and at sign cinnamon stitches in the description box or hashtag cinnamon stitches. I will see it either way. And um, or you can send me pictures of my emails like that's cool too. A lot of people do that. I just want to see it. I like seeing my work out there. I like seeing what you guys are doing with it. I like seeing the changes you're making because my goal as a tutorialist, a teacher, if you will, is to have you guys branch off from what I'm doing and not only rely on my tutorials but like design your own based off of what you learned from my tutorials I love that so show me what you guys are working with show me your water bottle holder I want to see oh man my arm is hurting today so that's what the double thick strap looks like which I think was probably a good idea and of course, it's taken longer than I anticipated because my arm is hurting. Because it's almost 8 o'clock at night. I've been doing this all day. <laughs> I, ha I mean, I haven't been doing this tutorial all day, but it feels like I've been doing it all day. I started writing the pattern probably around noon. So it's been a full 8-hour day of working on this tutorial.
Almost there. And then we'll be done. I really like this yarn. Like I said, this hipster yarn and the cotton sprout, it's not just like a workhorse cotton. It doesn't have to just be water bottles, washcloths, things like that. Like it also makes beautiful garments. Um, someone took the hipster yarn. Ashley at Stitching Easy took the hipster yarn and turned my spring fling t-shirt into a full-on dress out of the hipster and the cotton sprout and it is so cute a full dress so totally cute this is really pretty yarn it's got a nice soft cotton feel to it it does not feel like kitchen cotton it's not rough but it would definitely hold up to like water bottle um holder Thing. All right, so I put the last stitch in and I'm just going to go over to from where I attached it prior and put a slip stitch. And if you want to strengthen that, you can weave in your yarn. I don't even know where my scissors are, but there you have it. Isn't that a cute little water bottle holder? And then look, since I can't, I don't know where my scissors are. I think my scissors are in the living room. Got your little water bottle. Is this not cute? It like makes the the shape of the water bottle look like a like a pretty lady. Like it gives it a little figure. And then there you go. You got your little handle. Hang it from your wrist. Carry it like this. At least you're not carrying it like this. See if you hold stuff like this, you still got room for your keys or like your crochet hooks or your telephone, and you can go out the door. See my phone even matches. It's so cute. Oh, and this can also double for a little. Telephone holder, bam, look at that, isn't that cute? And then if you have the long strap, like say you're going out for a walk, or you're just going somewhere, you don't have pockets, if you make this long crossbody or neckwise, you can use this as a phone holder too. Is that not cute? I mean, my phone looks adorable in there. <laughs> so there you go, two tutorials in one. Isn't that pretty? So with that, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for watching this uh, tutorial for Premiere Week. And I will see you tomorrow with a brand new tutorial. Bye, guys.